Hey there, welcome back to the Caffeinated Classroom and another teacher tip happy hour where I give you quick, actionable tips that you can use right now in your classroom and beyond. And today we're actually going to be doing kind of a quick little coffee chat here. Well, actually, don't tell anybody, but this is tea. But it's feeling a little fancy, so I went for the old Earl Grey today, you know. Uh, today's chat is actually going to be kind of a quick one, but we are going to cover something that's pretty common. It's actually really common anxiety among teachers from brand new to seasoned veterans, kind of like myself. It's an anxiety around what happens if I mess up. So grab yourself something to drink and cheers. Okay, so like I said, this is a pretty common anxiety that educators, I think really just everybody kind of has. It kind of goes with the whole like imposter syndrome complex that a lot of people as they start getting into the professional world or just I think in general, I think it's just a human basic anxiety that plagues so many of us. And that is the idea that like, what if they find me out? What happens if I mess up? What do I do? So. But now that I've already said imposter syndrome, that's kind of a whole nother ball of wax. And that is something that I will absolutely be covering in a future video. It's something I've talked about before, but that's totally something we will dive into at a later time. But today let's talk about what happens when we actually like mess up. You know, sometimes we mess up in our classroom in front of our students. That's one thing. Sometimes we mess up with other teachers and we just make a faux pas or we say something wrong. Sometimes we mess up with administrators present. Sometimes we mess up in front of parents, whatever it is. What do you do when you mess up? And I do need to say, I don't mean mess up like in a way that would like get HR involved. <laughs> I mean like a little mess up, like slip of the tongue or foot in mouth situation, or maybe just like you misspoke and said something wrong. You know, like here are a couple ways that you can deal with a mess up and still have your dignity and your professionalism intact. The very first way, especially when this happens in front of students, I think students for some reason are often more intimidating. Maybe it's because they travel in large packs and like we're the only adult in the room most of the time and they're all sitting there staring at you, anticipating what you're going to say and waiting for you to do something. And teenagers are kind of a scary population anyways because they're like hormonally programmed to be judgy. Um, not in a mean way, it's just kind of like how their brains are operating. They're trying to find their place in the world. Um, and so when we screw up in front of students, obviously I'm talking from a high school perspective, so I'm talking about in front of teenagers, but really in front of any kids whatsoever. Um, it's a knee jerk reaction to get really defensive and to try to like cover things up. And that's one of the very worst things that we can do. One of the best things that we can do for our students is to just own it. And just to like admit that we are human and that humans make mistakes and that this is how I'm going to deal with it. I've said this in um, videos before, but one of the best like lessons, life lessons that we can teach our students is that adults can be successful, can be role models. You can look up to them and want to be just like them when you grow up. And guess what? Real adults screw up. We mess up all the time. We make mistakes. We say the wrong thing. We teach the wrong content. Oh my gosh, that's the example that I'll tell you in just a minute. And it's like one of those silly little things where I looked back at it and went, what is wrong with me? But I made a mistake. And I'll explain to you how I fixed the mistake in a second. But the first tip here is to just own it. Just be a human being. And remember that the only thing that we can control as individuals is our own behaviors and reactions to things. We cannot control how somebody else is going to react, whether they are a student or a parent or administrator or a colleague or whatever. We can't control how they are going to treat us when we mess up. All we can do is own it in a responsible and respectful kind of a way, be a human being, do better next time. Like that's all we can do. So like I was saying, if we show our students that good example, then they are, they are learning how to be an adult and how to be responsible and still have grace for themselves to slip up because everybody does. And here's the other thing you can do. Tip number two, when you mess up, fix it. If it's fixable, fix it. And if it's not fixable, learn from it and do better next time. So let me give you my actual example as to what I am talking about because I know I said I had like a few tips and I really only have two, 
So I have been teaching English language arts for a very long time. Just this past fall, I was teaching my students how to write a body paragraph. And so I had like written this whole mentor, I was sophomore English. I had written this whole mentor text where we were writing together and I was showing them an example of like an A paragraph, a B paragraph, a C paragraph, a do it over paragraph. And I was going through, we were talking about the parts of a paragraph. I was showing them like a topic sentence or subclaim should be the first thing. And then we should have what we call like in my school paragraph chunks, or sometimes you could call it like a CD sandwich where it's basically a couple pieces of evidence that are sandwiched in between context and analysis and then some sort of transition and then another sandwich or chunk down at the bottom and then some sort of a concluding phrase or sentence, okay? In a nutshell, there's a pretty standard structure for a body paragraph in a very formal and basic essay. So I'm like going through this like a couple days long process of teaching and practicing and, and trying some analysis paragraphs with different sorts of texts. And all of a sudden I am, not all of a sudden, but I'm, I'm reading work that students are turning in and I'm realizing that I have completely and utterly messed up. I have been doing this for over a decade. Like this is not my first rodeo. This is definitely not my first rodeo at teaching writing, but I just like, my brain just didn't work and I didn't notice my own mistake until I got student work back. So they had already been working with and practicing the wrong way to write a paragraph. I was basically, I was teaching them to write a full thesis or a claim as the topic sentence or as like the subclaim, the first part of a body paragraph. And like, then I was realizing that then when we move on to writing full essays like beyond the nitty-gritty of a paragraph. I was just trying to polish it up. Um, when we move back into full-blown essays, their introduction paragraphs were going to be all fouled up because of the way that I taught them to start a body paragraph. And so, and it was just like one of those things where I was so annoyed with myself and I could, every single paper had it done incorrectly. Correctly to how I taught it, but incorrect to like real life and how everybody else does it. Um, so I was trying to figure out ways to just like make it work in the future and just let it lie. And then I went, no, 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 Marie, you have to stop this. And I definitely had to rework my calendar a little bit with like my curriculum calendar and backtrack. And I just had to say, listen, some things went really well in your writing. Here's what you did great, da, 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 da. And let me tell you where I completely messed up. I have no idea why, but I just taught you the wrong way to do this. Let me show you the right way. And we just backtracked and we spent an entire day fixing what I had messed up. And absolutely, there was a good like 20% of kiddos who by the time they were turning in like a final essay, way later in the term, they were still confused. And I just had to keep reinforcing and keep reinforcing the right thing, the right thing, the right thing, and crossing out their incorrect notes and giving them the like the right way to do something. I just had to go back and reteach it. And sometimes that's what it is. Luckily that was fixable. Sometimes calling kid the wrong name at a point where you really should know their name, it's not really fixable. You just have to admit it and say, I'm sorry and mean it and move on. And it is what it is. There is no point dwelling in embarrassment <laughs> and awkwardness. You just gotta move forward and show kids, like use this opportunity to set a great example that teachers mess up. Like we're supposed to be the all knowing entity in the classroom, but we screw up because we are human beings and they're gonna do it in their lives. And that is just the way that the world works. So I just wanted to address though, this really common anxiety in human beings in general, but especially in educators, there's so much pressure put on us and we're gonna mess up. And sometimes it's bigger than others. Like sometimes it's little and it's silly and it's laughable. And then sometimes it's like, I taught them how to write incorrectly and I'm literally their writing teacher. So like, mm, what's wrong with me? Uh, but I fixed it. So be a human being, fix what's fixable, learn and move on if you can't. And there you have it. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I know this is a little bit offbeat from what I am normally doing, but I felt like I've been getting so many like good, decent questions about what do I do with my anxiety that I'm not gonna be perfect? And my response is you're not gonna be perfect and you're gonna be just fine. And the kiddos will be better off for your imperfections, you know? Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already done so, click the little bell so that you get notifications when these videos post. And also, will you please leave your biggest takeaway from today's video or any questions that you might have down in the comments below and I will get back to them and use them to plan future videos. 
And also I have a ton of lessons and resources and some workshops, some mini courses, different things that I would love to share with you. They are on my blog, thecaffeinatedclassroom.com. Please take a look there. And if we have not already connected on social media, please find me. I am on Instagram just about every single day storying about what is going on in my classroom. And I would love for you to join in. And until we meet again, I'll see you next time. Bye.